Hello everyone and welcome to another Watercolor Wednesday. I am Allison with the blog A Glimpse Inside and today we are doing this bigger 5x7 like gate fence painting. Um, I recently bought this uh, gate set. It's an older set, um, probably a couple of years older, but I just now finally bought it and I wanted to play with it. So this is what I created and this one will take a little bit of time but it's mostly trying to ink and place our uh, fencing gate like up properly once we have that all stamped the rest of it kind of goes pretty quickly so shall we get started I think so um I'll move that for so again the stamps that we need so from the wooden gate set, obviously the wooden gate. From the original flower set, we're gonna go with our trusty little daisy bunch. Flower set two, we're gonna use this long one right here at the top. And then in the original foliage set, we're gonna actually use the long, bigger grasses today and then this vine. Um, so not too many stamps. Again, it just will take longer to get us lined up how we need. And as for colors, I'm sure you can guess because I tend to use these all the time. Number 45 sepia, number 86 African violet, number 72 pine green, number, oops, excuse me, 15 olive green, number 8 violet, number 20 magenta, and then number 17 steel blue. These are kind of my go-tos, so we'll use them again. And then, like I said, 5x7, um, I just trimmed up some watercolor paper to fit, and let's get started. So, to start, we're going to use the fence as a whole, um, and we're going to ink it up in two colors. Start with sepia, and then we will top it with... Um, African violet. So just kind of spin your stamp around here so you get everything nice and inked up. Okay, so there's our sepia. Come right back with. African violet here. This will give us our kind of gray toned weather, weathered wood kind of color. Okay, I think I have it all. So now we're just gonna stamp this right in the center of our paper. Um, just kind of eyeball it. I think that's center, I'm not real sure, I can't tell. And then we'll just press that down really good. Okay, so there's our first thing. So now we have to do a little, um, not surgery, <laughs> removal here. So I'm going to take a, my, a baby wipe and I'm going to remove all of the ink from the arch up here. And then I'm going to start and in ink or in stamp this side. So since I'm going to stamp this side, I don't need um, this column. So I'm going to remove up to the tip of the door and then come down this whole side over here. Okay. So this part gets kind of tricky. So you, you may have to re-ink a little. That's actually the latch for like the little hook right there. So we don't need that latch. We don't need our hook because we don't need another gate. 
And then we're also going to try to remove it from the hinges right there. So again, it gets a little, you got to just think about what you have to remove here. Okay. So put that to the side. So now I'm going to try to re-ink anything that I may have accidentally uncolored here. So I'm going to come down this line, but try not to get it on my, try not to get it on the, um, hinge and then re-ink underneath that hinge there. So let's see, I've got some off of this end. So I'm going to come down here, redo our column and carefully come down. And then just kind of come right under that hinge and right above it. And then if you need to just kind of re-ink anything that you may have accidentally kind of smudged off. Okay, so there is the sepia. Now I'm going to just do a quick, well, as quick as I can here, I guess, of our... Um, African violet. So, like I said, this part is the most tedious part and kind of takes the longest because we're using one stamp to kind of extend our entire and create our whole fence. Okay, so we are going to use our um, positioner for this. So I'm going to just put this right in the corner, stamp that down real quick. So now I can use this little piece to decide exactly where I want to line my fence up here. So this kind of has a double line. So I'm going to just kind of try to line one of those spots up and then just try to make sure that my bottom side of my fence is lined up with that bottom fence. Put that right back in place. I'm just going to give a little huff onto my ink to kind of make it moist again and press that down. And there we go. So I must have shifted just a little because that's not quite connected, but that's okay. We'll just make that a dark shadow. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to quickly wipe off my positioner because we'll have to re-stamp. And then we're going to have to kind of flip our um, columns here. So I'm going to remove the ink from this whole side. And then we will re-ink and apply on the opposite and then just kind of give everything else a real quick coat again. Oh, excuse me if you heard that. I'm a little hungry. Just keeping it real here, folks late in the day for us. It's time for dinner. And I'm making this video. <laughs> okay, so there's sepia. Come back over it real quick with African violet here. I say real quick. Our like five minute coloring process here. Talk amongst yourselves. takes work, but it's worth in the end. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to make sure my positioner is dry. 
place that back down. We're just going to stamp that right back into place here. If you notice when I use my positioner, I try to kind of keep my stamp lined up to the right side because then when you flip it, um, it's easier to kind of get in that corner. So, okay, so same thing. We're just going to kind of match this up here. Let's see. That looks about right. So give it a huff. Place in that corner. Let's press that down. And there we go have our extended fence. How fun is that? Okay, so now it's time to add some water. So we're only, um, we're actually not going to paint this in. We're just dragging the color out of the lines here. We will just use a little bit of extra paint to kind of give some darker shadows and values in places, but we're just making it like a white kind of grayish fence here. So super simple. So where I'm going to start is anywhere that I'm going to do a shadow. So I'm going to come down this side of this column and just paint that in. Same thing on this side. We're going to paint this little area in just because that's about right where the one fence matches up a little bit. We're going to paint inside of that column. And then right down these little lines. And then same thing. So, and then right underneath, we have like a little arch shadow that will be darker. So that's going to get painted in. And now we just kind of eyeball here. So I'm going to come underneath, right underneath these wood Pieces. I'm just going to kind of drag a little bit of color out and if it gets to to be too much I'm going to come back later and feather that better so same thing under all of these I just kind of give myself a little you know order to go through here and that way Try not to forget anything. Get a little bit more water. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to kind of give a little shadow on the column here. doesn't have to be too much. And I'm just going to kind of come down the side and just kind of feather here. Same thing. Just kind of come down and feather out. Give a little detail. I'm going to try to get a little tiny shadow under that hook. And let's see. See me here, my children. We're in good moods today, thank you. Thank goodness. Okay, so same thing. I'm just going to kind of feather a little bit here over the arch. I don't want to do too much because we are going to put um, the vines and flowers onto it, but I'm just going to do a little bit of shadow just so if you see between the vines, you'll see a little bit. And then so I'm going to kind of come back here with a, a little bit wetter brush. Um, not too soaking wet, but I'm just going to kind of blend these if they were a little too harsh. Just to make them a little softer and more realistic. And then I'm going to come over like the lines on the wood a little bit here. Kind of give them a little, bring out that detail. And then I'm just going to kind of touch the lines that come down to enhance those like shadow lines. I'm not going to do too much color up here 
Um, I'm going to add a little bit of color on this top one as like this one's kind of casting a shadow. But I'm not going to do too much on these top ones. So I say that section is pretty much done. So I'm going to come and kind of feather through here now. And then again, I'll kind of drag a little bit more over here because that's where that one's going to have more of a shadow. And then come down our wood. I'm going to paint in our little um, hinge. And then down here on the bottom, these are kind of spaced out a little more. I'm just painting in that space um, just to leave or to create it, you know, fully dark. And I'm going to add a smidgen of a shadow right behind that hinge right there. And all right, so last panel here. I have too much color on my brush. Let's not do that. And this one will give it a little more of a shadow. You can add more wood detail. Okay, we are just about done here with our door. So like most paintings, if you accidentally, like some of these lines, add a little too much water, um, just go back in with a thin tip of your, um, one of your markers. And I'm actually going to just kind of come in here on this hinge and just kind of ensure that that is nice and dark and same thing with this piece and then I'm going to kind of add some more detail here I'm actually going to paint those a little darker so I'm just going to put some African Violet <clears throat> and then Sepia on my palette here and I'm just kind of mix these two a little bit and just kind of dab that in Go make that a little darker and then you can you know if you want any of your shadows so I'm going to kind of add some more of this color into my sides here to um, make these a little darker a little more shadowier you could even just <clears throat> Come in with just the thin tip of your African Violet, if you'd like. So, let's see here. I'm actually going to come put on this one. This one didn't stamp very dark. So we're just going to kind of come in before I move on here. I'm just going to make some of these lines a little darker so they pop a little bit more. And then there's like two little, two little hammer marks, nail marks, so I'm just going to kind of 
on one side of the board. I'm just gonna kind of add some in on the other side just to kind of make them a little even on the ones that don't have the hinge. And okay, that will be our fence. So next we are going to do the vine. And I pretty much use the olive green for a lot of this um, painting, but you can use anything that you like. So I'm gonna start here around the arch and kind of have some coming down it and kind of, you know, over the top. Just do a little bit to, <coughs> excuse me, um, to make it kind of look like it's wrapping. You know, I don't want anything maybe on that side. We'll have some kind of pop out the back here. Like it's growing on the back side of the fence. So you can just kind of add however much or little of this as you like. Um, you know, they're pretty fun to add. And you can just kind of keep going here. And add kind of a little bit coming up this side. Maybe this one does kind of peek over the front here. It's getting a little unruly. Um, actually, I am going to have this, I think, come over. All right. And then we're going to kind of add a little bit next to our posts over here. So you can kind of have it going wild, kind of growing up, you know, around it, behind it. Flip your stamp where it comes maybe over the fence. Same thing kind of over here. It's just getting a little out of hand. No one has come to trim it in a while. <laughs> so... Maybe that's the look that they were going for. Um, I'm going to have a little more right there, I think, just to come up. All right. So, um, before I add water, we're going to go ahead and add our flowers. So, we're going to do our daisy bunch here. And then magenta. You can use the whole stamp. You can have, use half the stamp. I'm going to use whole for a little bit here where I want some like bigger sections of flowers. So dab it a couple times before you reapply the ink. So I'm just gonna kind of come in with like two or three. We'll add a little bit over here because again this plant's getting out of control. Mm. And it's just fun to do. You can just sprinkle them in wherever. I don't think you can ever have too many flowers, in my opinion. But that's just me. I love flowers. Okay. So there are those. So now we'll, we'll come back in now. And we'll do some... Um, at our water. So I'm going to start with uh, the green and just kind of pinch my brush off and dab. You know, just spread that color. You know, put it onto those um, fence posts. Make it again like it's just Maybe this is a gate to the secret garden. So there's just green all over. Extend it out and down, however you want to do it. I just got a brand new olive green pen and oh my gosh, I forgot how good 
this color spreads when it's like a good brand new marker. <laughs> it's so awesome right now, guys. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm gonna come back and do the flowers. And this color, again, this magenta is super saturated. Um, that if you, you know, wanted to add some more bloom somewhere, but you're kind of nervous, so, you know, just bring it over. There's gonna be plenty of color on, on your brush when you're done doing these that you can add just a touch of that magenta um, to you know any place really so also be careful because if it gets on your fingers you may accidentally leave a little um, fingerprint on your paper if you touch it I'm not saying I've ever done that so I'm gonna add a little bit of pink down there because it's just a lot of green I'm going to drag some of that pink down onto my fence. Okay. And there are that, those sections of flowers. So next we're going to do our grasses. And we're just going to use the same olive green. Um, and I'm just going to kind of do it near the base of each pillar. So I'm just going to kind of walk it here. Um, you don't need too much. It's just kind of more where it's like that, you know, overgrown, overgrown grasses up near a fence where it's kind of hard to cut. You can't really get your lawnmower right there. Um, you know, maybe you didn't put a weed whacker. <laughs> so... However you want to do this, got a little happy on that one, came down a little too far, but that's okay. Um, and so I'm going to put a little bit more sepia on my palette and a tiny bit of olive green on my palette. And to start, I'm going to take the, um, make my brush pretty thin and then brush these grasses up and out. Soften those. Make them nice and wispy. It's almost done. So, and then I'm just going to kind of take some of my green on my palette and just kind of paint a little in near the base of the fence and kind of at the bottom of those grasses. Um, I'm not coming down real far with it. Like, I, there's just no need to. So, that's all I just want to do, just to kind of make it kind of flowy. And then I am going to come in with some sepia and just kind of brush in what would kind of like be a little dirt path leading up to that gate. And that's all. I'm gonna kind of try to make it a little darker towards the back. So I'm gonna take a little bit of um, sepia and then just kind of come over it a couple of times. Okay, our last stamp that we have are, is this little tiny bloom. Um, and in my sample picture, I made the flowers African violet, and I just wasn't a fan of them in the end of how they just blended in too much. So for this, I'm going to do uh, just regular violet for the bloom, and then I'm doing pine green, which you can just keep with the olive green, um, but I'm just going to do the pine green just for their stems, just for they pop a little bit more, and I'm just going to kind of stamp a couple in here and there 
kind of where those tall grasses were. Um, these kind of remind me of poppies, so maybe it's just like some little wild poppies growing. And, uh, you know, you don't need to add too much of them, just for something fun in front of the fence. You can make them shorter. You know, you can make them taller. Just do the bloom, maybe. Um, so, here, I'm just going to look. Like, that one didn't really stamp, so I'm just going to kind of add a couple blooms. Maybe we have a taller one back there. And there we go. So now I'm just going to touch the um, blooms with the water. Like I'm going to have a pretty dry brush and just kind of touch the base of those. I don't want to, you know, accidentally add too much water to these because then they'll just for sure disappear and like run. Okay, so, and our very last thing that we have to do is just a little bit of sky. So I'm just going to put some steel blue on my palette here. And I'm just going to kind of touch a little bit of sky, kind of right in the fence area. And then just kind of between these flowers. And again, I just kind of dab around with my brush. I don't actually paint. And you can add as much sky. You can add, you don't have to add sky at all. You can go to town and paint this entire background. It's up to you and your preferences. I'm trying to be a little more minimalistic when I'm painting <laughs> and not paint grass and paint sky and paint this and paint everything. Um, because it's pretty without it. And there you go. That, I'm going to call it. There is our super fun little gate with, that we made a big fence with just one little gate stamp. Um, take my marker here. And sign and date it. And this is a 5 by 7 You can easily pop this in a frame and give this to, to a gift to somebody. Um, or just turn it into a card. It would be great as a card too. Maybe, you know, inside and thinking of you or wish you were here. I don't know. Something fun like that. So, I hope you enjoy this uh, painting. And uh, join me next week for when we do a whole new watercolor painting. Thanks for joining me. Have a good one. Bye.